This certificate of appreciation is hereby given to Dr. M.D. Sabur Khan for his invaluable contribution as resource speaker on sustainability in higher education, teaching learning after COVID-19 during the 4th Madayao Internationalization, Linkages, Community Engagement, Research and Innovation Conference with the theme, Conversations in the Post-COVID Era, Lessons Learned and the Way Forward. This is okay that the teachers still do it. Still the teachers will focus that article for the Scopas or other publication. But at the same time, this is the time that our faculty need to understand about the student's future and at the real world impact. If the research is not going to be effective, if it is not commercialized, then these sorts of research may be, will be in the papers. It will not be coming to the benefit to the society. So understand scenario with data and analytics. As I already showed the one of the graph that how much the uh, development and impact is going on in every minute. I think this uh, faculty and those who doing the research, those who conduct the class, everyone need to analyze data and proper statistics and proper trend. They need to understand and they need to utilize it in their day-to-day -day class and day-to-day -day, uh, course development. Of course, the smart funding and digitalization. digitalization as mentioned that physical so physical and digital so digital is one of the component i think that as our day-to-day -day life as a human being we need food we need food we need food so without food we cannot think in our day-to-day -day life so at the same time without digitalization digitalization i think it will be tough for our own sustainability so we must need to be ensured i'm giving this example i think a lot of maybe you are aware about it as i mentioned the teacher must need to think about the every student they need to think how they will train to the student so you know that a lot of years back albert einstein is already mentioned that our education system the teacher all of the students those who are sitting in front of the teacher I think they never judge their merit. They never judge their career mapping. They never understand. So for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please, we need to think nowadays that we should not give the same education in the same manner, rather we should combine a lot of the technology considering the student ability and understanding. So what happened? Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish, by its ability to climb the tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. So I'm sure that the Albert Einstein is already mentioned this effectivity and understanding from his view, but now in pandemic, I think we realize, so we need to find out the inner potential of every student differently to make them the best. There is no other way. Again, uh, I must say that the organizer, thank you very much for organizing. I know that the more, the very close to 2,500 participant is already participant in this conference. A lot of the stakeholder is already joining. So this is the high time, good time, best time, right time to bring in the, all of the education partner to make an academic bank of credits to promote the flexibility of curriculum structure and interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary academic mobility of students across higher education institute. You know that the some university may be their very best in the data analysis, some university may be best in the business of this, some university may be best in the textile, some university best in the nursing. So this is the time to just make a very good cooperation among the partner university so that the giving the opportunity to our student to do the course. Okay, he like to do the course in the one US university, go there, do three credits, six credit, you accept the credit and go to the someone is coming to Bangladesh university, someone going to Thailand university, Malaysian university, European university, Austria, whatever happened. So it is the time to consider and let's start the partnership from this Madaya conference I hope that this will be the one of the new era that which we will help our coming student. Again, the best practices. You know, the, some teacher are best to motivate to the student. Some teacher are best for the technological adoption. 
some teacher are best for the mentoring some teacher are best in the research some teacher are maybe industry academically in lot of cases there is the best practices is going on so this is the time to share the best practices among us so that the, we can develop in our own uh, own own infrastructure that is style of teaching and again uh, we develop from our uh, our university we develop international online universe it's called the iuu.ac so share your knowledge with thousands of student and earn benefit to international open universe we develop <laughs> as i already mentioned so at the same time you know the university need to strive to be the nucleus for all research collaboration in academia and industry i think this is the time one university and one institute we can share each other we can see that what sorts of research collaboration we can do mm -hmm. because the research collaboration i think maybe some university they are best in some specific field some other other university or other college they are specifically or specialized in other field so this is the time to make the research collaboration and not only the research collaboration should be only the faculty based this is the time to bring the student also in the research because if we involve to the as much as student in the research i think it will be effectively applied so some of our initiative we are showing say suppose we are giving the every student one student every student we are we are providing that one laptop until today from 2010 we started almost today until today 40000 laptops we already giving to our student because we realize without technology nowadays it is impossible to develop their career for getting the best teacher we already introduced the teaching apprenticeship fellowship so the teacher those who are coming to newly join they started a specific training camping and other facilities so if any university of any institute institute is like to follow us we yeah. love to share yeah. we love to share our teaching apprenticeship fellowship and we also develop some smart edu system you know that this pandemic we are keeping our operation 100% active so no student realize they are not physically present in the university we keep continue all of our operation so we develop this smart edu system there is a 50 plus module already we develop and creating impacts with a better educational platform so lot of lot of you know this uh, effectivity is there skill analytic zero infrastructure cost easy tracking knowledge sharing uh, student data analysis and of course the blending learning and we analyze we mentoring our student you know due to this covid lot of the student becoming frustrated lot of cases they are really losing their concentration on education so you already developed our psychology department they day to day they also conducted lot of this uh, counseling in every day we also developed with a one malaysian company the virtual educate so this virtual educate we also giving these feelings to the student though they are not able to come to the university so through this virtual gate they can enter to the class they can visit the campus they can share with their friend and they can take the selfie so these sorts of logo lot lot of lot of lot of tools you already develop so whenever they enter you know as avatar they can enter to the class they can talk with the teacher they can move to the there is a map that where they should go so who is the speaker today and who is to conducting the session if they like to apply to any of the university or any of the department they can apply and they can join chat they can talk with the relevant counselor or people and they can visit to the stall they can talk with the exhibitor or they can talk with the counselor and you know that these sorts of facilities we already enable uh, in this uh, pandemic and as i already mentioned some of the digital steps also we conducted as for sustainability as i mentioned smart edu we also developed on goedu.ac considering the our own culture own language Uh, as also we are mentioning we mentioned that blending learning center i think almost more than 4000 classes is now 100% truly is effectively we are running online through the blending learning center and a lot of you may award that due to this pandemic a lot of the foreign student those who are not able to stay uh, more than a few months so already we conducted the virtual convocation virtual farewell ceremony so that is why i should say in the past people came to the information which was put at the university but in the future the information will come to people whoever they are what then is the role of the university 
I hope that as I, as I mentioned, this is the time for the university. This is the time for the university to realize. I think someone microphone is on, right? Okay. So the management is minimum requirement is for comment about the agenda. Pero kung magkakatag something about the attendance, no comment. Contradicting mga kita siya sa perfect attendance na magkakasang last report. Eh, I use a report card. Is it okay? Or ito ka source of... Moderator? I think, Pam Suzette, what is being asked is not necessary to square in 100% attendance of the student. Let's say, Okay, so in the past, you know that the whatever scenario is going on now, we need to think, we need to rethink, we need to unlearn, we need to adapt the technology. We are, we must need to embarrass the technological development. We need to give the emphasis to our student. So with the, all of my presentation, I'm trying to cover up some few of the point in respect of the sustainability of our education system. So thank you very much. And thank you to the, all of the participants. Wish all of you good luck. And if you have any question, I'd love to give you an answer. Thank you very much. Okay. So thank you so much, Dr. Khan. At this juncture, we will now be entertaining some questions from our audience. Yes, we have a question from the University of Southeastern Philippines. Yes, sir. You Good are morning. Good morning, Dr. Khan. Uh, I am Jolly. Um, I have in your presentation, it's very admirable with all the interventions that Daffodil has done. Um, I am wondering, has there been any government regulation that may actually contribute or stop you? Because in the Philippines, we have government, the Higher Education Authority, and uh, there might have been some in your country. Uh, what has the government uh, been doing? I mean, in a way that it has contributed or other laws that may have actually slowed down all those implementations. Thank you very much. No, no, thank you. Thank you very much. I think you are, Mr. Jolly, you just uh, pointed out the right question. We are very lucky because our government, first day they already realized that they should allow to the all of the education sector to go to the online. So our prime minister and our education minister, we are also quite surprised because when we educationalists are also worried that what should be the next, but in the almost, I should say the day one, both of them, they declared that no, education cannot be stopped. Go to the online and take your all preparation. And they already giving the message to the, all of the mobile operator, all of this internet service provider, please allow student giving them the facility, some discount, so that they should not face any sorts of internet problem. So this is the one of the beauty, I should say, that the, from our government, which honestly speaking, we are also not expecting. And even that they also developed the policy, I must say the University Grants Commission, they already developed the policy. And I know that, that they already, they officially, they also announced that yes, it is allowed. So go to the online and try to continue your operation. So now they are already, I'm sure that going to finalize the, a policy so that the, it could it should be the continuity because without the as i already mentioned the digital should be transformed to the physical i already mentioned in my presentation may i have a follow-up question yes. uh, madam moderator yes yes please yeah. sir uh, yeah thank you dr khan uh training of teachers have been emphasized as what you have said was there a subsidy from the government in the training of the teacher? Yeah, government, I think due to pandemic, they are not taking preparation, but you'll be happy to know that the ISOs of the few days back, government is also declared, they will going to set up a one training institute for the teacher, for the university teacher. And even that I also mentioned that in this pandemic, we also developed a one model, it's called the TEF, Teaching Apprenticeship Fellowship. We understand that if it is the time that we cannot send our teacher directly to the class, they cannot able to handle to the student. So that is why a three month boot camping we develop through the online to giving the proper training to the students. So that is why I offer to the 
uh, San Pedro College or to this conference that anyone is interested, please contact with us. We will help you uh, to just uh, share our experiences. And even that jointly, we can develop your teaching apprenticeship fellowship. We will love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Khan. And thank you for those questions, Sir Jolly. Now we proceed to the other question we have here, Dr. Khan. One question is, what are the things that should be unlearned? <laughs> Can you give us some insights on this particular point? Well, uh, you see, every day we know that uh, we have to go through the class. We should follow the, some traditional method. So this should be unlearned. We should need to know the reality. We should see the data. We should ask the Google uncle. You know, sometimes I joke that you ask the Google uncle, what is the trend of the job market? What is the education sector trend is going on? What is the market demand? If you are engineer, if you are a food specialist, whatever subject you are studying, you need to analyze your data. You should get the alert from the Google or other media that what trends is going on. So based on the trend, if you see that you are following the old trends, please you forget it, you unlearn it, and then you come up with the new system. Without unlearning, you cannot come up with the new system. That is the problem. And you see that the once upon a time, we use the bicycle, right? But if you like to go to the bi now new places quickly, we need the motorcycle. So we need to unlearn that no, bicycle is not effective for me. It takes huge time to go to the, my places. So if you don't reject or leave the bicycle, you cannot accept the new technology. That's why I'm mentioning that we need to unlearn first. Thank you so much for that. I, I remember the engagement that our department in the pharmacy. Yeah, I think that's a one, a one, yeah, one people is already uh, mentioned that uh, DIGAM, right? DIGAM, that what exactly the physical? Well, I mentioned that physical means earlier, the education sector was completely depend on the physical interaction. Teachers come to the class, students also come to the class, they are sitting in front face to face. But now you see the scenario, parents are also worried. They send their kids to the school or not. They send their children to the university or not. So that's why what happened? Whenever they will feel, hey mother, I'm not feeling well. I'm sure that no mother will allow to send their son or daughter to the university. So they will say, no, 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 my son, take care of yourself. Also. So, but if they lose the class, what will be happened? In that time, from the home, they can go into the online and they can enjoy the live class of the teacher. So you need to involve the physical, that is physical and digital. Like you see, the earlier we conducted the board, now you need to, you need to be set up the interactive board. That board also have the you know built-in camera. So whenever you conduct the class, the class will be in the live, and at the same time, it will be going to be the online platform. What we are doing now, you see, you are conducting this session. At the same time, you already live this session to the Facebook or YouTube. This is also one source of physical. We are in the, because moderator is already sitting in the physical. I am also talking with physical. But you see, we are interacting with digital. That is called physical. I hope you understand. Thank you. Okay. So I think I also have a question. I'm an educator myself, Dr. Khan. And I don't know if, um, in the delivery of instruction, we're trying to have a grip of the things already. We collaborate. In fact, we also had a collaboration with Dapodil University in your pharmacy department. But one thing that I find most difficult, and I don't know what suitable or appropriate approach can we have in this pure online um, delivery of instruction, is assessment. I am curious to know how do you assess your student, especially that it's like online? Yeah, it's, it is possible because this is true that the due to cause of this pandemic, I think faculty, university management, they were not taking the proper precaution or preparation. So now in this pandemic, you know, you already collect a lot of question and answer. You already understand the pulse of the market. So now what happened? All of the data, you need to be organized in such a way so that the, you can, cons taking the online examination and you can assess proper way to your student. There is a no way they can go or they can hide or they can copy and paste. So, but thing is okay. that it is your responsibility or our responsibility how to utilize the technology. You know, the online proctoring is already there. So if they, if they change their eye, if they change their body, 
I think instantly they will be stopped. So, no, 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 you are already doing the miss, 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 miss happening. So that is why what happened? This technology is going to be the more faster. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, that a lot of cases, this pandemic, what happened? The bank is doing. I know that Europe, USA, 90% bank, they are not allowed their customer to come to the bank. They told them, go to the online, ask them. You know, the chat board and the robot is there. So bank, all of the transaction, they are already operating through the online. Whenever they fail to do the online, they are allow them to come to the bank physically. So the percentage of the visiting customer to the bank is 10% only, whereas it was earlier 100%. So I think assessment, all, and you know that the, now you need to resign your rubrics, new design, you cannot follow the earlier design. You cannot follow the KPI earlier one. Your KPI will be now different way. How can you develop your dashboard? How can you develop your smart board? How can you bring in all of your data? You know, whenever you're typing in Microsoft Word, what you're doing, control S, right? To keep you safe. So same thing, you should do it. When you will conduct the class, you have to keep in mind that my class, my assessment, my data, am I saving? Am I keeping the security? So these sorts of alertness, I'm sure that you will do face by face. Thank you. That was truly insightful, Dr. Khan. Um, I think we all need to really have massive evolve, evolution in the way we deliver our instruction and even our assessment. Because everything is so digital that all informations are easily accessed online. And whenever you give them a question, it's easy for them to just ask Google. And the tendency is they will be Google dependent and Google reliant. And so securing if the basics are being assimilated by our student is one of the issues of today. But yes, um, you mentioned about online proctoring. Does this mean that everybody or all of the faculty of your university also um, ask for another third party to do the online proctoring or it's the faculty themselves that does the online proctoring? Right. So I ask you one question so that will be clear for all of the participants. As a, as a faculty, if you conducted one class, after three to four days, if you find that one of your students created a innovation, innovative tools and promote it to the Facebook and everybody is already, it makes the, it, it's coming to the viral. Everybody is praised to the student. Hey, student, where you learn? Who is your teacher? Which university, which college you're studying? So do you think you will call that student and you just praise him or her? Hey, we are wonderful. What you did it? I conducted this class. I'm giving you idea. But you already created this idea and developed this innovation tool and you promote to the social networking. That means he or she got the, will get the highest mark. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have a question here from one of our audience. So we have a raised hand from San Pedro College. Sir Fuentes, sir, you are recognized. Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, hi, good morning once again. Um, it is my a great privilege to be part of this session. And um, thank you, Doc Samborkan, for the information that you have given earlier. I'm just also curious about, um, uh, we all know that COVID-19 has brought um, economic ramifications all over the world since it happened. And um, even all industries, even businesses have been shut down. So one of the industries that have heavily affected is the um, education system, especially here in the Philippines. My question, Doc, is, what else should educators pay attention to the next few years? Well, as I mentioned, because uh, our main intention should be to cover up this, uh, you know, the cover up this shortage or cover up this gap to depend on the digital transformation. Because, uh, you know, the, if we can able to develop the educational lecture in an interactive way, again, interactive way means the student accept it. Student will show their attention to learn it. If these sorts of interaction we can develop through the digital transformation, I think we can minimize the gap because there is no shortcut way now. Only, that, only the way to just depend on the technology 
and also bring the best practices. That is why in my presentation, I already mentioned, say San Pedro College, you have plenty of teacher, you have plenty of student. Let's try to bring their expertise in the front line, try to assess who is the innovative, who can handle these sorts of gap very quickly, use his or her best practices and disseminate this information to the other faculty. By this way, you can cover up overnight. What we are practicing, I must say that the, in our university, what we practicing, we always see which teacher and always we found that young teacher is already always become the innovative. So we just bring him in the front line, bring him har har and organize the way winner to educate to the other teacher that look how this gentleman or this gentlewoman or they are already performing this uh, class the way so they already organize the webinar and other 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 faculty they follow it and they develop them that's a really good practice and you see you pull best practices of your colleagues and highlight these pra best practices so others will also follow or others can also i, think I saw that the, another question is coming from the san pedro college yes uh, that's yes. how we are uh, doing this training and internship that's a very good question thank you very much I hope that San uh, Pedro College, if you send us a one in just a, one mail, we'll send you the information. We organize the virtual job fair using a 3D platform. So all of the exhibit, all of this company, they are coming to the online platform. They recruited, they give them the internship. So we also develop the virtual internship also. And you will be surprised in this pandemic, we are providing few thousand uh, virtual internship in, virtual internship in this pandemic time. So we develop some solution and platform. Uh, if you send us uh, one uh, mail, I hope that our team will help you and give you the, some of the guidance. This is okay. the time for innovation again. Thank you, thank you. So, sir, we have another question here that was sent privately. How was the feedback of your students with the new normal that includes the technology and the platform you are using in your institution? Thank you. Very good question because this is a, one of the KPI we already set for all of our teachers that every month we assess what is the feedback of the student, what students say about our class. Are they really cup up? Are they really praise? Are they really? I think 90% students, they are completely happy. So that is why we developed in this pandemic a mentoring monitoring system. So this mentoring monitoring system, every teacher after conducting their class, they must take an assessment and fair assessment that should not be influenced by the teacher. It should be the very fair assessment. So through this assessment, we can realize that what is the student expectation from a teacher. So based on the student expectation, we are trying to change our uh, lecture module or our style of technology and other things. Okay, thank you so much. That's a good monitoring and mentoring um, scheme. Um, I would just like have to give a follow through of the question about the internship, um, Dr. Khan. Does the on-the-job training or internship that you have, this pandemic is pure virtual or you have limited face-to-face? -face? Uh, I think uh, we are giving them almost 100% virtual. Virtual. Because we are not taking the risk Okay. Considering the, you know, this, uh, because uh, Bangladesh is also facing after one month, there is a suddenly lockdown. So these sorts of, you know, the uncertainty is going on. So that's why we allowed our, uh, this uh, student for the virtual internship. But we developed some, lot of these training tools before going to appear to this uh, interview for the virtual internship. Okay, thank you. We have another question here. Good morning, Doc. From what I understand, the concept of the information coming to the student is one that will require systemic changes. What specific changes would facilitate these new model? Would prominent institutions adapting this approach expedite the process? So I would like to repeat that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think this is true that the student uh, perception, student attitude, student intention, as I already mentioned, because without student, you cannot, without make them happy, you cannot sustain in the long run. Say, so, you know, in pandemic, uh, due to cause of the student confidence, they already insist to the other student to come and to join to take the admission. 
because you know the lot of the students they are waiting they know after this pandemic they will come to the university they will take the admission so but the thing is that you know existing student whenever they are confident they can easily they can give it to the other other student and sometimes i'm i'm really surprised because sometimes we see the lot of the parents is also interacting with our teacher the so when my son or daughter is conducting classes as i am also stuck in the home i am also sitting beside my daughter or beside my son and i'm really enjoying the way you are conducting really amazing so these sorts of student interaction we are always accepting and these times we also engaging parents i think this is you should keep in mind because the parents is one of the key component because if current parents is not allowing their son or daughter is a good and more environment whatever lecture or deliberation you are doing maybe it will not be effective so that is why we also bring the parents also in this interaction okay that's good now we have one more question it's in this situation we are in now that we are experiencing this pandemic what do you think is the first thing or first step that a school should do to step up or improve their educational system which you feel is applicable to our country philippines i don't know if you are familiar with our educational system yeah i'm sorry okay. <laughs> but this was one of the questions just to give you an overview um, we are when i i join uh, okay. as a i join in a few convocation speaker in in philippines few university also yeah right. but so my any, suggestion yeah my yes, suggestion should be my suggestion should be to giving a clear guideline from the university you should develop a one training guideline tools completely virtual guideline that what they should take preparation what they should learn how they should learn when they will face what they should do which the media what should be the best platform they should interact with the teacher if they are not facing the problem if they are facing the problem who should be the right authority so that the without interrupting or without physical or without call they can easily interact with the students so suppose we also develop a payment gateway system in our university even we have lot of educational setup i should say we have 29 uh, institute in our uh, family our defoli group so all of the institute you will be surprised it is if it is bank close it doesn't matter because we develop a payment gateway system it's called the one card so through this one card they can easily they didn't ask anyone they just go there one card and they can make their payment so these sorts of facility this is the time you need to develop for the student so maybe you can name it student guide student apps whatever help whatever else but you must need to give them the proper guidance so without any interruption they should get the a to z solution that is so true and yes super substantial because you see it begins with a clear cut policy or guideline thank you so much doc kan okay, i think in you. the inter <laughs> in the interest of time i'll be entertaining one more question and we have it here in the chat box one of the problems students are facing right now is mental health problem i'm sure you're also experiencing it how can we address this as educators yeah that's, that's that's why i'm just slightly giving some idea we appointed few psychiatrists in our university and they are conducting every weeks every day through the online and we giving our student a free uh, that is access they can call they can chat they can send the mail they can uh, do the training with this psychiatrist and related to their various sorts of problem because due to this pandemic i think when they are stuck in their home they become very frustrated and you know that a uh, few student is very less in our university we did not find anyone but some other university we observing student are suicide also because this sort of mentality is also growing day by day due to cause of this lockdown or this frustration so that is why i i'm sure that our all of the teacher also we develop them in such a way that whenever you conduct with class if you find the student are not coming to the class please talk with the parents please try to understand what is the reality because some cases we also giving the financial benefit you know the some parents lose their job 
some parents already coming back from the abroad they are not going to the middle east country for getting their job so what happened their income is going to be drastically zero so parents is also become frustrated student is also become frustrated in these times so what we do it we already develop some financial facility also we giving some waiver and one to one we talk with the student if anyone is really affected in the financially we are trying to organize to give them the some uh, the interest free loan so these sorts of facility we already uh, enable our university okay thank you so much um, it's a good tip that aside from addressing mental health you are also addressing the the causes of some of the mental health problems and that and is even i should i, I should also problem yeah, sorry yeah. i should also mention because we are lucky that 6 years or 7 year back we also introduced parents insurance you know this pandemic around 17 or 18 parents died due to cause of covid so all of their kids all they can continue their st st study without any money because we have that secured insurance for the parent i think that is is very effective in this time so i hope that Uh, all of the university in philippine also should follow this one so that the, this one also giving the student moral confidence in any cases my parents is lose oh, we also give them a uh, uh, medical facility also if the parents is disable or any kind of accident they are unable to do the job so they will also get this benefit all right thank you so much dr khan